we, we thoroughly enjoy b being in, in Dublin and Ireland and um, the kids have settled brilliantly, you know, fantastic schools. Um, and, and, you know, Joe, my wife, is, is really enjoying, you know, everything that, that um, Dublin has to offer. We've had a bit of a quick look around, you know, the family's been over for Christmas and, and you know, they've, they've wandered around the country having a look at, at various different, different um, opportunities where, where there have been O'Connors previously. So, so you know, it's, it's a long and, and somewhat checkered Irish past, but um, one that I'm very, very proud of. I think the highlight of the season, definitely the final, a packed RDS, fantastic day and, and we probably saved our best rugby of the season for that day, which was very, very pleasing. Uh, the RDS is a fantastic atmosphere, you know, the, the family feel and, and all generations there together, uh, it's pretty positive, you know, they, they enjoy their rugby, they, they like to see, you know, entertaining, um, attacking rugby and, and they bring that attitude to, to, the, to the contest. The pleasing aspect of it was, you know, our away form. Um, you know, to win to win five out of six games in an incredibly tough group was was very very pleasing. Um, the tough thing was we didn't get enough points to end up at home in a in a quarter final. But um, you know, to, to get out of the group was positive and and very very hard fought. But um, again, disappointing. The performance at Toulon was disappointing. I mean, to lose to the to the. Um, Ultimate winners is, isn't a disgrace at all, but you know we were disappointed with our form that day and, and we probably didn't deliver the best version of ourselves. Every point is, is at a premium in Europe and, and no more so than this year when, when the groups across the competition are going to be that little bit tighter. So we had a pretty definite plan early in the, in the competition to, to make sure that we, we stayed alive and you know we were, we were down to, to, um, to, to bare bones at stages in those, in those first two weeks and some, some massive performances from the, from the group kept us alive and, and um, you know, a, a quality second half against Wasps got us the result there and, and then a, a really tough, hard earned victory away at Casts which doesn't come lightly and I think you know, their, their form over Christmas I think was more about prioritising what, what they need to get out of their domestic competition as opposed to a true reflection of how good or bad they are as a side and you know, to be, to be two from two after round one and two was very positive. Um, you know, to take five points away although, although not win the head to head was a little bit disappointing but again it, we've got everything to play for. I always thought that we would get the we would get the rebound of that in a performance, and um, we probably didn't get it against Edinburgh, and we certainly didn't get it against Ulster in the semi-final. But I think the the final was it was a fitting farewell for those two legends of Leinster rugby, and um, you know the what they have delivered for the environment and 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 for the for the province over a long period will will take a long time to, to replace. The, the, the true value of champions like that is what they provide the environment and what they provide the other guys. Um, you know, tremendous confidence, tremendous composure, um, you know, driving the standards, driving the bodies around them to make sure that they are delivering at their very, very best all the time. And, you know, I think, I think that's what you miss with, with genuine quality people like Leo and Brian and, and, and unbelievable players. John O'Gibbs did an unbelievable job for the, for for Leinster. I mean, he was he was here for the three Heineken Cups, and you know, there's not many coaches around who who can say they've been associated with winning three Heineken Cups. So so that was a huge loss. But um, you know, Leo was always going to be able to to step into those shoes, and and I'm sure in time that he will be an unbelievable coach, and and um, and certainly incredibly instrumental in in Leinster moving forward. Marco has, has coached a lot, but again, new to the environment, and it takes a little bit of time to, to develop those relationships and trust and, and to get the best out of guys. But I think you know, the, the, the six months that we've had has certainly um, increased that learning curve and, and made it that little bit steeper, which hopefully at the end of the day will, will produce a better product for us. One of the huge positives of, of my time here is, is been our ability to retain those world-class guys. You know, Jamie Heaslip, Sean O'Brien, Rob Carney signing on for, for long-term deals. You know, says a lot about the environment, says a lot about Leinster. You know, together with a lot of very, very talented young guys um, in the environment that we've been able to maintain that will ensure the, the growth and, and strength of the province for a long time to come. 
the reality of it is that, you know, the only way you can get that experience is by doing it. And, you know, it's no different to any inde other endeavour in life. You know, you have to actually be in there and doing it before you can actually make an assessment on how good or bad or, you know, what things you need to improve and, and what things are going well. So it's given us the ability to evaluate some of those guys as players, as leaders, um, as, as contributors to the environment. You want guys, you know, you want guys to be training you know, week on week with the guys that they're going to play with and then, you know, the preparation that goes into the into the performance at the weekend, you want to build on that over a couple of weeks and, and just due to circumstance, whether it be player management issues or, or injury, we haven't had the ability to do that and, um, you know, disappointing because you want to try and get better game on game, week on week and, and you know, there were stages where it was put on the band-aids, patch us up and, and go out there and do enough to get a result. And um, that makes it difficult to grow your game. The, the expectation's positive, you know. The, the expectation from, from the wider community is never as great as the expectation in the environment. It's always gonna be there, that's the reality of it. But, you know, it's a little bit short-sighted um, in the sense that you're not really comparing apples for apples. Um, and, you know, it's very, very dangerous to compare season to season because the dynamics are so different, you know. The opposition, you know, the way the game's gone, the, you know, there's so many different factors that contribute to winning and losing um, in professional sport. And, you know, I think, you know, people are entitled to their opinion, but, you know, you'd like to have a little bit better clarity and, and understanding of some of the dynamics at times. You know, the, the guys work incredibly hard on being better day on day and, and you know, we, we're trying to grow our game every week. But at some point, you know, you need to have a little bit of realism to that. Um, you know, it's a pretty new group. There's a lot of guys, you know, in the environment that are getting older, um, unfortunately. Um, and there's a, there's a transition that goes with growing those blokes into the players that we need them to be.